use a radio power. Hello, a little bit. We, do, uh, we haven't found Hello? out what the colors really mean, but uh, uh, okay. we can change them actually. Oh, okay. yeah. But now they. they uh, She's just like a tulip because she can't move her head all the way back. So can she talk? Yes, she can. She can. She got blue ears. Uh, it indicates that it will listen in a way, so that the microphone is on and that it takes sounds. Do you listen? Do you hear me? Yes. Do you hear me too? <laughs> Why yeah. doesn't she answer? Uh, one has to start. Hello, everyone. I am Mark Hina. Awesome. Cool. <laughs> yes, Mark Hina. That is Latin for machine. But I am a robot. I am a very delicate kind of machine. Just like humans, I like music. Therefore, I have learned to play the guitar. Go to a camera this tiny hole then in the mouse there's another camera and also in the eyes are two cameras mm -hmm. so she has four cameras and do you see the red light here in the eye yeah this is a laser beam which measures distance so when you are here it measures the distance from here to your face I am Mark Hina I am a robot these are professors <laughs> these are <laughs> these are professors. Oh, so oh. I can say, did you do that? Okay. We are totally freshmen with the machine and uh, have to learn a lot at the moment. And what have you learned so far? Not to get <laughs> to be somehow impressed when I get looked at like I'm looked at now when the machine looks into my eyes um, with these manga eyes, so cute uh, and so full of emotion, uh, as humans we are so much uh, uh, impressed by what we see. So there are cute eyes and my first reaction to the robot is according to the cuteness of the eyes and the fact that it looks into my eyes. And as it looks into my eyes, I think, I confer, I project that there's a reason behind that it looks into my eyes. Interest towards my person, but there isn't of course. 
nothing. At this point, Pepper is an interesting platform due to its cuteness, as it produces no barriers whatsoever between people and itself as a machine. We can um, actually explain to people, including children, um, that this is just a machine and we can explain how it works. Mm -hmm. um, other people then say like, well, but maybe the children get attached to the robot, so that could be a problem. Um, uh, so there is an ethical discussion about that. I see that they treat it like a human, they talk to it like a human, they have the expectations also that it responds like a human. That sometimes is the case, but sometimes not. Um, because the robot is not so autonomous as people expect. People expect uh, it to do all kind of things by themselves and respond in a human-like way all the time. And this is not something I think that contemporary robotics can deliver. Um, but it is in the expectations. So what we have now is a very kind of limited kind of intelligence. Um, of course, computers were already much better than humans in doing fast calculations. Um, robots can do more. Um, and for example, there were computers that could play uh, certain games better than humans and so on. And so there's definitely progress. Um, but before we get to any stage where, where we can say this is really human-like, um, I'm very skeptical uh, about that. Hello, can you please come to me? I'm, behind, I'm standing right behind you. Can you please come? I like you. Now can you please come finally? I am right here, just behind you. Is that the sound? Yay! Oh, meet the name. She's like a zombie. Oh. I definitely understand that people are afraid because there's a lot of science fiction um, that makes people afraid of robots. Um, I don't think these kind of robots are going to do uh, necessarily bad things to us. What we should not uh, waste our time uh, on is, is these scenarios where um, big robots are artificial intelligence agents take over the world and things like that. So we need less Hollywood, but we do need more ethical and political reflection on robots and automation. Yeah, it's not about the naive fear that those machines would, uh, once you have this robot at home, it would one night get the kitchen knife uh, and go to the bedroom and stab me. No. Be quiet, please. Looking at this one, trying to what? Interview. Be quiet. So you have to be quiet. Well, I talked with her and I played with her and uh, I tried out the reactions and I tried to program. Well, I find it a very nice friend somehow and I also, I also think her eyes are really cute and I like it that when I ask her a question that she can react but sometimes she can't. And she also did guitar and saxophone, which I found so funny. Yes, I would love to have Pepper at home. Is it a her or a him? I think a her. Why? I'm not sure. Basically, the robot itself is only a computer. Mm -hmm. And in my case, uh, it is there is no necessarily to be more afraid of the robot than from a smartphone or a computer, maybe this is even more dangerous because you don't even recognize that a smartphone is a camera and is tracking everything you're typing in there. What we are discussing very often, it is two different things. The robot itself is somewhere a puppet and inside there is a computer. So if you're putting the computer uh, out of the robot or if you're putting the program away, then the intelligence is gone intelligence in big brackets. Can you play saxophone? Wait, Lucky is, is doing something that they can say. <laughs> That was really nice.
nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was very good.